Introduction to Dynamical Systems, Part 3, Attractors in Dynamical Systems. As I said within Part 1, if we want to construct a model for a real physical or biological device, such a model will be typically represented by a system of non-linear ordinary differential equations. Such systems typically do not have closed form solutions, uh, exact closed form analytic solutions. And uh, the question appeared, how can we make use of such models if we cannot solve them? I mentioned three approaches uh, and the most productive of these approaches was to combine geometrical methods with analytical tools with some prior extra knowledge available about the underlying physical system. If we are talking about uh, biological devices or even uh, non-biological devices with complex behavior, we really need to know something which is um, typical for such systems, which can help us to make more sense uh, of our ordinary differential equations. So let us try to consider the most typical, the most common features which we can find in all living systems and in many non-living systems with complex behavior. First of all, such systems are open. What does that mean? It means that these systems interact with the environment, first of all, by giving them energy, by dissipating energy to them. So such systems must be dissipative. Also, as to living systems, living systems survive only if they have a certain source of energy on which they can feed. For example, uh, it is impossible to survive without some food. Next, real systems, including biological systems, must be nonlinear, and they are nonlinear. What does it mean that they are nonlinear? Consider a funny example. Suppose your system is your cat, and you want to feed this cat. Suppose there is a certain very nice food which is good for your cat. At least, it should be good. Suppose you give your cat 10 grams of this food and the health, the state of the health uh, of this cat improves. Now, suppose you give the cat 200 grams of the same food and suppose the cat likes it and feels even better. But giving the cat 2 kilograms of this food does not necessarily make him healthy or might, uh, might even deteriorate his health, which means that there is no um, proportional relationship between the input and the output. Very often, complex real systems display the so-called self-oscillations. These are oscillations which occur as long as the system sort of lives. In, when, it, uh, when we speak about living systems. Or in a mechanical system, there is example, an example, a grandfather clock, uh, whose pendulum will be oscillating uh, while the system has enough mechanical energy. If we want to produce realistic models of such systems, these models should reproduce all the features listed on this slide. To reiterate, they must be dissipative, they must feed on external energy for living systems, they must be nonlinear, and sometimes they could demonstrate self oscillations. Consider dissipation. What does that mean for a dynamical system? Well, the physical phenomenon dissipation manifests itself in dynamical systems as a certain behavior of the phase volume in the phase space. Consider the three-dimensional phase space and suppose that at some initial time moment we specify a certain cloud of initial conditions 
which all lie inside a certain sphere. As time goes by, every single point from this cloud will move from left to right in this slide. And suppose we want to monitor the behavior of points from this cloud. And in dissipative systems, it means that as time goes by, the volume of this cloud will, on average, decrease. So this cloud will shrink, will contract. One example, one possibility of such a contraction is illustrated in this figure, and uh, you can see that our cloud of points contracts in all directions. What happens to the, to the phase volume uh, with, with the course of time? Well, uh, it is not difficult to predict that the phase volume will eventually shrink to zero. However, this is not the only possibility, because sometimes, in some systems, it is not impossible for the phase volume to shrink in all directions except one. So the volume will shrink, but the size of the cloud uh, does not necessarily shrink in all directions. And it, is, it can be possible uh, that while technically getting smaller, the phase volume gets smaller and eventually goes to zero, but the size of our cloud of points becomes very large. And incidentally, this scenario is occurring in very special dynamical systems, which are capable of chaotic behavior. In dissipative dynamical systems, there is a remarkable phenomenon which is called self-organization. What does it mean that the systems can self-organize? Well, first of all, uh, we should point out that the living systems, that biological systems are actually self-organizing, as well as many chemical systems and physical systems. In the language of dynamical systems, it means that we can set initial conditions in such a system more or less at random within a certain range, a certain phase volume, but in the long term the system will spontaneously converge to the same sort of behavior, to the same behavioral pattern. This long-term behavioral pattern is represented by special geometrical sets in the phase space of the dynamical system. And these sets have a name, attractors. Uh, what does it mean, attractors? It means that the phase trajectories uh, from the nearby are attracted to this geometrical set. And if we set initial conditions uh, in the various parts of this neighborhood, as time goes by, the system converges to the attractor. The significance of this observation is that for such systems, we do not, we are unable to find closed form analytic solutions. But good news that we do not even need them to predict the long-term behavior of the system. Because, at the end, all we need to know is where attractors are and what neighborhood of these attractors is going uh, to, in, uh, to ensure convergence to these attractors. This neighborhood is called the basin of attraction. Let us consider an example. We will consider equations describing a certain chemical reaction. And the name of these equations is brucellator after the city Brussels. And the reason for that is that the model is proposed 
by Ilya Prigozhin and his collaborators, who worked in the University of Brussels. The dynamical system for this chemical reaction takes this form of two ordinary nonlinear differential equations of the first order. And uh, to predict the behavior of this system, it is quite helpful to look at the phase portrait. There are two control parameters in the system, parameter A and parameter B, and now let us set certain values of these parameters. We set A to 1 and B to 1.7. Now let us launch this system from three quite different initial conditions, starting from different points in the phase plane. By solving this system of equations numerically, we observe that from all initial conditions the system converges to the same point, which means that we do not really need to know the full solutions uh, of this system. All we need to know is the position of this, of this point and also its neighborhood uh, from which the trajectories are attracted to the point. Now change parameters, in particular increase B to 3, the situation changes quite dramatically. Instead of a fixed point, we have a more complex object, a closed loop. However, it has the same property. We set initial conditions from three different points, and from all of them the phase trajectory converges to the same closed loop. This closed loop is called a limit cycle, which is another attractor. We appreciated already that, in reality, uh, all we need to know to predict the long-term behavior of our nonlinear dissipative system is the position of attractor, perhaps the kind of attractor, and also the uh, basin of its attraction. What kinds of attractors do we know? There are four kinds. The first one is the simplest attractor called a fixed point, and it describes the stationary long-term behavior when the system eventually uh, stops evolving. In the phase space, the trajectories around the fixed point are represented basically as a spiral or some trajectories converging to this point. A slightly more complicated kind of attractor is a limit cycle, which we just discussed before. The third kind of attractor is slightly more complicated. It can only uh, exist in the phase space whose dimension is three or more. So in a three-dimensional phase space, this quasi-periodic attractor uh, will look like the surface of a donut and it has the name torus, in particular a two-dimensional th uh, torus for a three-dimensional space. And finally, there can be the so-called chaotic, often, often called strange attractors. Such attractors are remarkable, and they are famous for being quite sensitive to accuracy, to initial conditions. We already appreciated that what we really need to know about the dynamical system is not the full set of solutions, but in the first instance, the attractors. Would, we cannot find the solutions of our nonlinear dissipative systems analytically, but perhaps we can find attractors analytically. Let us see. Well, unfortunately, the only kind of attractors which can be found analytically more or less reliably are the fixed points. Uh, however, uh, we should be a little bit, na a little bit uh, lucky uh, with the system, because the system should should be reasonably simple, reasonably low-dimensional, to permit analytical uh, finding of a fixed point. What about limit cycles? Well, limit cycles can very rarely be found analytically, but most of the time they, are not, um, they cannot be located analytically. And uh, finally, tori and chaotic attractors cannot be found analytically at all. So our options are a little bit limited. We can have a hope to find only fixed point attractors, so let us try to find a way to, to identify them. What does that mean? To be at the fixed point. 
As the name says, uh, when the system is at the fixed point, it does not change its state. The state does not evolve in time. This means that all phase variables must be constants, and this means that their time derivatives must be equal to zero. So when we try to find a fixed point, the first thing we do is we appreciate that uh, the time derivatives of all phase variables are just zero, which means that automatically the right-hand sides of our ordinary differential equations must be set to zero. This allows us to go from a system of ordinary differential equations to the system of algebraic differential equations. However, even these algebraic equations might be quite nonlinear and might be quite difficult to solve. Suppose we find a way to solve this system of algebraic equations and let us denote the solution as x star and this will be our fixed point. And of course there can be more than one fixed point in the system. Consider an example, the same paradigmatic van der Poel oscillator. We write down the oscillator equations in the form of dynamical systems and to find the fixed point we set the right-hand sides to zero. This allows us to conclude immediately that y must be zero always uh, to satisfy the condition of the fixed point. And then we slightly rewrite, rearrange terms in the second equation. The second equation is nonlinear, however, because y must be zero, we take, we look uh, at the left-hand side, we observe that uh, some uh, bracket, 1 minus x squared, is multiplied by y, and y is zero, so the product must be zero, like this. So if the left-hand side is zero, look at the right-hand side of the second equation. The right-hand side is simply x multiplied by a constant omega naught squared, which means that x must be equal to zero. So we found our fixed point and we have only one fixed point in this system. Uh, the fixed point appears to be at the origin on the phase plane. And if we want to, be, to depict it on the phase plane, that's how it looks like. I would like to acknowledge professional and technical assistance from Olga Sosnovtseva, Dmitry Pasnov and the Center for Online and Blended Learning of the University of Copenhagen.